Hello, welcome to another episode of the Book Fix Podcast, a podcast that fixes lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Jahida. And I'm your host, Chelly. Oh my gosh, dude. Every oh single goodness. day that passes, we're getting closer and closer to the fateful day. The fateful day. Oh my God. August There's 11th. There's just so many fateful days. Which <laughs> August 11th. <gasps> I'm narrowing Red, white. <laughs> Red, and white. Royal and blue? royal blue. <laughs> I like how oh my God. <laughs> I like how you said right red white. I was gonna be like, whoa, a little patriotic there. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Wait, can I can I admit something embarrassing? Can I go ahead. Admit go something ahead. just for you, just for you, Chelly. Okay, everyone, everyone, shut don't up. listen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, anytime, like, okay, Fourth of July just happened. Okay, so. Anytime I would say red, white, and blue, red, white, and royal blue would come out. Like, every, that would just come out of me. It was like I had free promo for them or something. I know. Like, like ev- don't ask questions. Don't. Don't ask questions, please. Every time I say the pledge, I think about those two gay men. It's hard. I it's know. Hard I'm sorry. To. Every morning when I wake up and I have to say the pledge, I, <laughs> you know, you know how Americans do. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, Very patriotic. Thank you. It's funny because I feel a certain way about this movie coming out because everyone's so hyped mm. about it. I'm seeing all these edits. Yeah. And can I be honest? Everyone with you? except <laughs> you. <laughs> the thing is, like, it wasn't bad. And both of us said that. You remember? We like, I think that was our thing. It was like, it's not that it's bad. It's just how did two gay men make Texas blue? And that was like our whole episode. Like we would say all this these things. Is <laughs> fiction. This is fiction, okay? Let me live in my fiction world. You know what I hope happens? Mm, I hope there's what? a scene in that fucking movie where they're sitting in front of the TV. You remember when they, they count the electoral votes and you can see like the bars, like, you know, on mm-hmm. the screen. I <laughs> hope I hope it shows whoever she's competing against and her and her bar just moving, like, you know, growing and growing. It's like, oh, my God, are you guys getting this? Look at Texas. <laughs> They're gay now. Uh-huh. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I just feel like they might change the ending. What do you think? Do you think they're going to keep that same ending? No. no way, right? No. There's no, no way. fucking way they're going to keep that shit. I feel you know like what? So I'm upset. Why? Yeah, this should have been released on election day. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, oh my god, dude! It would have upset hella people if it was released on election day, as <laughs> is, like true to the book. It's like you're watching the votes on one screen and then <laughs> the movie on the other screen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> History, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> History, huh? Oh God. Okay. Well, I'm excited though. I, I am, am so too. excited. We're talking about it, right, on the mm. podcast? Yes, we have. To. I I hope we are. I feel like when it was announced, oh my God, I was so hyped. I'm ready. I'm Dude, be glued to my screen. Casey McQuiston were your biggest fans. Just to let you know, we've read yeah. one whole book of yours. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Has is that it? Is that all we've read? Yeah, we didn't read the Sharon Sher- Wheeler one, which I heard is really good. The murder one. Mm, no, we should. I but I think okay, you have to virtual pinky promise me this, okay? And it's going to be a lot what? to ask what? for. Um, what when August eleventh comes around? Well, we're probably going to film mm. the day of. I'm guessing because both and I will be hand in hand. We'll just use yeah. one mic. We'll Pray. film together. Um. <laughs> You and we'll just be staring into each other's eyes the whole I time. I really want you and me to reread the book before we watch the movie. Oh, my God. Easy. I already did. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And done. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on. You're just like, wait. <laughs> done. I had a book next to me. <laughs> I was actually on the last paragraph. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to restart today. Oh, my gosh. As much as I would love to continue to talk about history, um today we are actually moving away from romance which honestly i will be very very honest with you i did not know what type of story this was so i was kind of pleased that it wasn't a romance but yeah we it are was nice 
Yeah, nice change of pace. Today we are talking mm-hmm. about Confessions by Kane Minato, which it is a Japanese book. So we read a translated version of this book. It is considered a mystery mm-hmm. and thriller. Um, and you were the one who brought this book up. How did you hear about this book? I uh, watch a lot of, um, oh my gosh, I don't know his name. I watch a lot of booktubers. And mm. there is this one okay, guy I that I freaking love. And he does like just book recommendations. And he recommended mm. this book as like one that made him feel very unsettled. So mm. I I didn't know much I about it because I, I like kind of put those on and like just listen to it like in the back. Um, but I mm-hmm. saw the cover and I just screenshotted it and I was like, okay, I'll read it later eventually. And then when we were coming up with our list, I was like, might as well, because I really wanted to read it and it's short. Okay, so this story um, is about a teacher whose name is Yuko Moriguchi. And this story starts off with her resigning because there had been an incident that year in which her daughter passed away. And um, she reveals to her class that the reason that she's leaving is because she figures out that her daughter's death, which was deemed an accidental drowning, um, is not what it seems. And that she knows the truth and that two people murdered her daughter. And those two people happen to be students of hers that are in that class. So um, she basically leaves them in like chaos. Like she she fucking says the yeah. worst shit without even saying their names and just like, good luck, bitches uh-huh. and leaves. But <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> but um, this story follows. Um, it's in the perspective of multiple people and just mm-hmm. follows the aftermath from that confession yeah so yeah if you're into Um, mysteries and thrillers i do recommend this book this is a very quick read yeah if you're into short reads if you're into books with like twists and turns i think this one would be a good one Mm -hmm. um if i had to guess because yahira and i don't talk about how we feel about the books that we read and i think Personally, this month, we've done a really good job not talking about the books we're reading. But I think it's because we're both yeah, we really busy. Talk. I know. Honestly. How are you? <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We do talk. <laughs> but um, I have not talked to you in a bit. I'm going to say that you're going to give this a 3.4. Specifically 3.4. There, nothing more, nothing less. You can't do that on StoryGraph, though. Three point five. <laughs> Thank I, you. 3.5, but you're you're gonna give it a three point five and be like, oh, should it be a three? That's what you're gonna do. I, I feel that. That's your energy right mm-hmm. now. Oh my god, that is so nice of you. Thank you for thinking <laughs> of me. Okay. Um, I think you would give it a hmm. Four that's it, a four. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I was gonna go high, like I was gonna do a percentage, like you did, but I was like, mm, too much, huh? too much work right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not okay. gonna think that much. Well, um, let's go ahead and just get started with our conversation. I want to start off by saying mm-hmm. that when I saw that this, because I listened to the audiobook, when I saw that this was like mm-hmm. six hours, but only six chapters, I was like, damn, these chapters might be I'm- fucking juicy. Dude, I know because I, I had the ebook, so I was like, damn, how much longer for this chapter to be over? Because I normally don't care about that stuff. I know some people have to finish their chapter t- in order to like be done. Mm-hmm. And I was like, am I almost? I was like, because the way that the story flowed, you know, it definitely kept me engaged the whole time. So I was like, okay, how much longer until this one's done? And every single one in, in my ebook was like 40 pages or so. Damn. Like, damn. Can I, can and I, can I tell you something? Yes. When, when we got to the when I got to the end of the saint, which is the first chapter, I was like, this this could have been it. Like this could have been over right here. And I would have been, what the fuck? Okay, so <laughs> I wanted to ask you because like uh we said, it's six chapters, but it's because every chapter mm-hmm. specific specifically follows a different character. And I yeah. like the naming situation of the chapters because it's like the the trait of the character that's speaking. So our mm-hmm. first chapter is in the perspective of the teacher, Yuko Moriguchi, and it's called mm-hmm. The Seeker. 
right? It's called the saint. It's oh, called okay, the saint. Okay. But I think the saint is not. I, I assumed it wasn't necessarily describing her. I think it was describing the daughter. Mm. That's how I, I took it anyway. I kind of took it in but the I perspective. Could be wrong. You might be right. Because honestly, I feel like there's a lot of interpretations that we can take with this type of story. Um, but mm. I I considered it. I don't think it, the teacher's a saint. <laughs> I considered you know? it I don't think so. the way that she views herself. That's what oh, I thought. Oh, okay. Cause, oh, that's um, a good way to look at it, actually. Because I don't know if you felt the same way. When I first read this chapter, I, okay, first of all, I was thrown off because I did not expect this entire chapter to just be dialogue. It was literally just her and yeah, then her reacting uh-huh. to like the students. But she did say something mm-hmm. interesting about herself where she was like, yeah, I just, I just feel like I haven't been a great teacher and it's all my fault. Like I could have done better. And that gave me the ick. I feel like people that do that are kind of fishing for the compliment of like, no, 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 you're a really good teacher. Mm -hmm. And so for her to consider herself the saint, it's like she wants to view herself as better. So she's over here like, yeah, I'm not great, guys. But it's like, no, you think you are. That's why you're saying that. That's that's kind of how I took it. No, I think that's a really good interpretation of the chapter, because I mean, I I agree with you. I felt like the chapters were describing, you know, whoever was the voice of the chapter. But for me, I was like, she's not a saint. But I do agree with you that that's definitely a way that she would see herself. So in the first chapter, um, like Chelly said, it's just dialogue, which kind of threw me off. But it was kind of crazy when she was like describing something, like talking about something. And then she'd be like, oh, um, uh, one of the students' names. (sighs) Why are you looking at me like that? You know what I mean? Like she would mm-hmm. like stop, but then go straight back into her story. So just to move forward. So she basically describes in this first chapter that she is resigning and she's like, I know you guys probably think it's because of my daughter. You know, her daughter, unfortunately, had passed away uh, through drowning was what they believed. Mm-hmm. But she was like, but she was also describing that her he wasn't her husband, right? Like they never got married. No, the father it was just of, a, her partner at the time. Okay, so the father of her daughter, Manami. Mm-hmm. So he has AIDS. And so when she's describing that, she notices that her students are immediately like, oh my God, like kind of like grossed out by it. And she's just like, well, why does that gross you out? But not, you know, something else. And I so, love that part because they had read a book about yeah. someone with AIDS and the kids were like mm-hmm. super sentimental. And she's like, oh, when we read the book, you guys were sentimental. Now that we know a real person with AIDS, it's disgusting. How hypocritical of you guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, call them yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, like she was calling them out. She gave no fuck. She was like, today's my last day, bitches. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming for every single one of you. She looks at a kid in the but- back. Francis. Fuck you. Okay, that has nothing to do with our conversation. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> oh my god. Your grades pitiful. I know. <laughs> yeah. Your she talked about her daughter drowning. She talked about her partner, her the father of her daughter had AIDS. And there was another thing mm-hmm. she had mentioned. Actually, I thought the way that this chapter started with them drinking milk was kind of interesting. Cause I had no idea where the fuck this was oh, going. Because yeah, as she was, was as she was as she was going on i was like so why did they mention the milk so basically they started off this chapter by saying that the students had to drink milk every morning because they were doing like some sort of experiment to see if um, they would be smarter than the other schools yeah and so as she's going on with her spiel pretty much um she basically like tells her class like i know that my daughter was killed by two people and she describes them as a and b and and she goes over like what happened and um wait how much in detail does she say again does she it's because so it's she cause with every chapter you you get more yes. details so she basically makes it like i'm not going to reveal who it is but student a and student b did take my daughter to this place and student a um hurt her and it's kind of like suggested that student A did it with like something they had built. And then student B mm-hmm. uh, was there. And then everyone, mm-hmm. everyone in the class just assumed that student A did it. So there's a student that raises their hand. And is like, yeah. oh, they built something. So who's to say student A won't do it again? And then mm-hmm. um, 
Moriguchi, the teacher, is just like, oh, no, but student A didn't kill her. That wasn't strong enough to even, like, hurt this, like, a a person, you know, like an adult person or whatever. Mm -hmm. She was like, yeah, it wasn't strong Mm -hmm. enough. It was actually student B uh, who threw her in the water while she was still alive Mm -hmm. that killed her because she died. Yeah, but I I just... Yeah, but I just really appreciate the storytelling because as she's telling the story, you do believe that it was uh, student A who was responsible for it because she describes him as being like super ambitious and how he was making this um, invention of of like a pouch. And when you would open the zipper, it would like shock you. And but then she was like, yeah, but actually it was student B who did it. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't want to say their names because she knows that student A craves that attention. And she's like, yeah, I'm not going to do that for you. Oh, because during that time when student A was, you know, praised for his invention, something had happened right in the news. Like there was a stu- uh, like not a the was it, I don't know if it was another student or just no, it wasn't it yeah. wasn't there, but it was in Japan. It was called the lunacy incident. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. a girl had murdered her entire family using cyanide potassium. Potassium cyanide, whatever yes. it's called. Yeah, so she was basically like saying, like, I know that student A craves the attention, so I'm not going to give it to them. Mm-hmm. And I like how this chapter ended because she was like, by the way, guys, <laughs> everyone, good job finishing your <laughs> milks. I know you guys just <laughs> gobble them up. But um, <laughs> she was like, just to let you know, to the two students who um, did murder my daughter, I did put a trace of blood from the the strongest man I know in there. Yeah, that's right. My partner, remember the one who has HIV? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I put that in there. And um yeah. I suggest maybe take a blood test in 3 months. And everyone else, oh my congratulations God. for for passing the 8th grade. You'll all move together as a class and I really hope that, you know, you take care of these two students because she didn't Thank she you. didn't want to take it to court. She wanted to handle it mm-hmm. in her own hands, which is like an interesting mm-hmm. thing for a teacher to say. But it's funny cuz one of the students well, because- is like, "Well, what's going to happen if they don't get HIV?" Like, what if that doesn't happen? And uh-huh. she's like, well, <laughs> she's like, I'm going to run you careful. over. I know. She was like, I hope they're careful with <laughs> swerving cars, specifically on D Street, because you know where I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking revving up well, she... in the parking lot. <laughs> I know. She didn't want to get the police involved because she knew that because they were minors. I mean, literally everyone here is like 13. Um, they wouldn't really get like a high sentence or, or anything. She had really. brought up um, during her story of a student who had once told a teacher something like the student said something Mm -hmm. to the teacher and it was very disrespectful and she basically got suspended for it. But um, the story was twisted because they thought it was like corporal punishment and then the teacher got fired. So she was like, so why would I say anything? Because I know they're going to blame it on me. Like they're going to pin it on me anyway. They're going to go for the kids instead of, you know, because it's like, why are you bringing your daughter to school anyway? Like, why are you doing that anyway? So she... Somehow she kind it would of be her fault. Mhm. So in her perspective, she thought that she could handle it. And honestly, after reading the first chapter, I was like, damn. <laughs> she's really <laughs> yeah, going same. she's really going through it, but I also like I completely hated these kids cuz in my mind, like the way she mm-hmm. painted them, they just seemed heartless. And I was mm-hmm. like kind of on her side cuz I was like, yeah, these kids fucking killed a child. And you didn't, it because it said student A and student B, us as the readers in chapter one don't know anything about these students. The only thing we know about mm-hmm. them is their reaction in the class, which student A was just kind of like staring straight ahead, listening to the conversation. And student B was as mm-hmm. pale as a ghost. So like, it's it's yeah. wild, you know? It It was definitely a crazy way to start it, but I thought it was great. I, I didn't know how to feel because obviously I sympathized with Yuko Moriguchi, but then I was like, damn, they're 13, but also they murdered a child. That's crazy. I, yeah. I had no idea what was going to happen after this. I had no guesses, dude. Did you have any guesses on where this story was going? Uh, not at this point. After the first chapter, I was just kind of like, damn, they hella hurt her. And the fact that she yeah. like, because like when I read the first chapter, I don't think it hit me how unsettling mm-hmm. the fact that she gave them HIV or like the possibility mm-hmm. of giving it to them. 
But after a while, mm-hmm. it started to hit me. I was like, that's fucking scary. If I was at school yeah. fucking enjoying my leche, my milk, and then one of the <laughs> teachers is like, by the way, someone named Brad, <laughs> you might have to check yourself in three months. Okay, Brad? <laughs> you know what? I would also it was be crazy scared. because... Yeah. So when I first finished the chapter, I had to reread the last couple paragraphs because for a second there, I thought she gave it to everybody. She was like, you know what? Fuck you guys. <laughs> you guys were there. You didn't do anything. So I had to read it again because I was like, wait, did she just like do that to everybody? But no, it was just those two kids. Mm-hmm. It's so scary too the fact that she was so calm when she was like, and all of you just get to move on as a class. Like, congratulations. Yeah. And it's like, oh my fucking God. All. All she needed was to be like, and follow me on TikTok, guys. I know. <laughs> follow me on TikTok. I will be doing I'm some be, dances. I'm going to be posting my fucking driving videos, driving POVs. And if you see a road bump, <laughs> <laughs> she's, like, she's fucking <laughs> owning that shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, let's go on to the second chapter. So chapter the second two. chapter, was it the martyr? Yes. Um, For those of you out there who forget what this word means which is me because i always forget <laughs> um me. a martyr is someone who isn't is it, killed can i guess oh go ahead isn't it like someone like when someone dies it causes like a movement no or like you're like the symbol of something yes to the second half uh it there could be movement caused because of it but a martyr is someone who is killed due to their beliefs which uh, okay. when i first because i when i saw this chapter and I read that, um, it confused me because I got to the end of that chapter and I was like, but she's alive. <laughs> like, oh, I know. You know? <laughs> that was crazy. Oh That's God. what I was thinking too. I was like, I don't understand who the martyr is. So this um, chapter Damn. is based off of another character whose name is Mizuki. And Mizuki mm-hmm. is one of the students who was there that day when they had the talk in the class. And she is writing mm-hmm. like she's writing this in a journal format because her intentions yeah. were to publish it in a journal that she knows that her teacher used to read a lot. And she kind of starts it like, hey, just wanted to let you know you shouldn't have left that quick because a lot mm-hmm. of shit has happened since you left. And, like, it just feels yeah. right to let you know what you've missed. So Mizuki is basically giving her a rundown of the ninth grade, how as soon as it started, everyone was very tense. Like, it, it was a very, like, weird situation for them to come back knowing that two killers were going to be there. And when they all walk in, student A, the one who had built the electrical device, um, yeah. His name is Shuya. His name is Shuya. Mm-hmm. So Shuya is just in the classroom reading a book, not talking to anyone. And everyone's ignoring him. And she was like, yeah, it's crazy how everyone has gotten really good at ignoring him. It's like he's not even there. So he's there. Mm-hmm. But student B, whose name is Naoki, um, is not there. And they take note of that. Like the fact that Shuya came, but Naoki didn't. And Shuya was the one who like, didn't really give a fuck and naoki was the one who like made the face like pale as a ghost when the the news was revealed to them yeah so all we know from them is that they're just gone dude how did you feel that this fucking tense ass class has a teacher like mr werther because <laughs> oh my I, god <laughs> i was because weren't they getting annoyed with him too because they were yes. like, they don't, he doesn't understand. And then he's over here freaking like chugging down the milk. <laughs> he's just like chugging. He's like, damn, this is some good ass milk. Give me <laughs> more straws. Wanna, I'm about to drink sip? six of them at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so they, uh, obviously, they get a new teacher whose name is Mr. Werther. And, you know, I'm going to dram- dramatize, dramatic, I don't know the word. I'm going to make it a little more dramatic. But, you know, true to the story. <laughs> okay, this go bitch go ahead. skateboards in the classroom. Right into his chair, but his chair is backwards. So he's sitting in it backwards. Cool kid style. Fucking wearing Love three hats. Puts them puts them all, one to the left, one to the right, and one to the back. All three ways that are cool to wear a hat. And he, oh like, literally God. is just like, hey, cool cats. Hey, cool cats. You can call me Mr. <laughs> hey, <pussy> cats. W- <laughs> I know. <laughs> you can call me Mr. <laughs> Werther because I'm a worthy ass bitch work and then he like does that dance move where you fall to the floor and they're like whoa <laughs> <laughs> <Break> dancing. 
I thought it was I thought it was perfect though because obviously for um the class they're all just like on edge after what just happened and he just comes in like hey guys you know what call me by my first name like, you know what don't even call me guys I I'll be there I I'm right here <laughs> like, I'm right here he's just trying to be everybody's friend and he mentions like um just to let you know I'm not like other teachers but uh, by the way he also mentions it's his first year so love that for him he's a pick me teacher so he's just like <laughs> oh I'm God. not I'm not like fucking other teachers like most teachers they're out here teaching you the fucking Pythagorean theorem but if Ted runs out you know I'm about to stop math and we're gonna talk about why Ted ran out because that's the type of teacher I am loyalty honesty yeah and swag that's what we need in the comments. Like, you know, and so he, uh-huh. it's funny because he paints himself as like someone who cares a lot and it kind of mirrors what the other teacher kind of was. So like she also told them that like, I'm one of those teachers that I would run out and chase you if you ran out of my class. I would talk to you. I would, you know, she said that too. So it's now like another person who is um trying to push himself to be this type of teacher but then it doesn't feel like it because as we see in Mizuki's perspective, it seems like he only does these things in order to like, mm-hmm. what's the, uh, inflate his own ego, basically. Yeah. So, um, they yeah, because mentioned- he's also super concerned about Naoki, which is a student B who hasn't been there. And he's just like, you know what? We have to come over, visit him every day, show him some love, give him the homework that he's mm-hmm. missing out on. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, he just really wants to insert himself in these students' lives because I feel like you, like Charlie said, it just like inflates his own ego. Um, but and the way that he does it, you, it's almost like you think that he does really care, but you learn that and no, it's just, it's just for show pretty much. Yeah. And there are like, three moments where you can tell he just is a sucky ass teacher one of the moments is near the middle where mizuki mentions that she notices that as soon as one of the students was super excelling which his name is yusuke he's just like a side character Mm -hmm. like this teacher mr werther makes like his entire life about yusuke he's like look at him he's so great he has good grades he's amazing Mm -hmm. and then Mizuki reflects and on her note on her journal she's like yeah Miss Moriguchi you never did that like when one of us would succeed you would let the class give us a round of applause and then you would connect it to like yeah you know Yusuke might might be a baseball player but baseball remembers a team sport so uh, it took a lot of people for him to get to this point and she would kind of like spin it like that and um Mm -hmm. even to the people who didn't do much even if it was a little thing because um Mizuki is class president. She would always be like, look at how great she's doing as class president. Everyone give her a round of applause. So at this point, I started to feel kind of bad for Moriguchi because she sounded like a good teacher in my eyes at this point. Mm -hmm. And fucking Mr. Worthy, I couldn't fucking stand him. He was over here like saying (laughs) Yusuke was the best. And then, uh, oh my God, dude, the way he handled the bullying in class. Can you explain that? So, at first, nothing was really happening in the classroom. It was just a lot of tension. Um, but then, I think it was Yuko Moriguchi's favorite student. I forgot his name. But then he started to bully Shuya because he was like, oh, you know, you're a murderer. And that kind of snowballed into everyone started to bully him. And it, it turned into this whole, like oh, well, if you're not bullying him, then that means you're on his side. You're his friend. And in turn, we have to bully you too. And so I I can't exactly remember. I know that they bullied him and the teacher saw, right? Or he noticed? Yes. So um, I can't remember exactly that moment. So what had happened? I know happened, he didn't handle it well. Yes. So what had happened was the day before that big bullying incident that you're thinking about, um, the whole class had received a text message and they were saying, okay, we're going to play a game. Everyone has to bully Shuya and um, you get points based on what you do when you bully him. And to the person who has the oh, lowest yeah. points, we will bully you just as bad as him and you will be labeled murderer's bestie, like murderer's best friend. Basically. Which is literally insane. That's literally insane. 
Yeah, and then Mizuki was like, it was crazy because the two quietest girls that we knew, they're over here bullying him too. And so she Mm -hmm. refused to do it at first. But then one night when she was cleaning, a few of the students had called her over. And when she went into a room, um, Shuya was tied, like taped and like lying on the floor. And they were like, you're Mm -hmm. not bullying him. To prove that you you were one of us, you have to throw this milk at him. And... um, she grabs the milk and looks at Shuya on the floor. And at first she doesn't want to, but as soon as she sees his eyes, she's like, wow, he has no resentment, like no, or no mm-hmm. regret for what he's done. Yeah. And she's like, fuck this bitch. Mm-hmm. And she's going to throw the milk at his stomach, but misses and hits him in the head. And at that point, like everyone's cheering and laughing, but then she sees his eyes and he looks like sad. And in her mind, it's like, he he's making the face as if bad. yeah but it was like he's making the face as if saying like are you're one to judge me look at what you're doing and then mm-hmm. she felt bad so she said i'm sorry they heard her yeah. and so but what was the punishment i feel bad because i don't think she said it that loud she kind of like mouthed it but then yeah. whispered it and people were like oh my god you're sorry you're sorry and so they grab her and then they like make them kiss pretty much. They like get her really close to him and then put their lips together. Yep. And they take a picture of it and they're basically like, yeah, we're going to blackmail you. We're going to keep this picture. Mm-hmm. And remember, they do yeah. this. They do this with the knowledge of knowing that he might have HIV. Like that's the reason that yes. they make them kiss. And they give um, no fucks. Mizuki ends up going home. But automatically, like, gets a text from Shuya. And Shuya is like, meet me at the convenience store. where Let's meet up. And he... They meet up and then they go to, like, a more private area, which is, like, in a, a an apartment that looks abandoned. But it turns out it belongs to his family because that's where they, like, store stuff. It used to be his grandma's, but his grandma died. Whatever. And he calls it his <laughs> laboratory. And they meet up and reveal that um, Mizuki... The day after, no, the day of the confession that Moriguchi made, she took mm-hmm. Naoki and Shuya's milk and blood tested it because she happened to have the chemicals. You know, you know, every teenage girl. Yeah, she had she had like something that would react <laughs> to blood. With blood. Yeah, and she realized that both of the milks didn't have blood, and um, mm-hmm. Shuya showed her his results of the HIV test and noticed that he was also negative. And then Shuya asks, like, do you believe her what she said? And she was like, well, I don't believe her about the milk, but I believe her about everything else. And he was just kind of like, yeah, well, she kind of added a few dramatics to it. And that was the first point in this book where I was like, holy shit, everyone's unreliable. Like I can't, Mm -hmm. I can't fucking trust anyone up in this bitch. Is Mizuki even your real name? (laughs) <laughs> then it threw me off when they started kissing so i was like wait what because she literally mentioned that naoki was her first love which is um you know the other one yes the other student who was responsible for uh, the daughter's death so i was like wait i'm so confused why are you kissing shuya if, if naoki is the one that you're supposedly in love with i i thought the whole kissing thing was just supposed to be them like showing that he doesn't have hiv that that's what I thought, mm-hmm. but also like okay. I don't know if you would agree with me because we don't really see it that much. But I think Shuya is really charismatic when he wants to be. Like I think he knows when to act a certain way in front of certain people to like him. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I, I mean, think I, I that's what it was. That. And he was very good so at giving her mesmerized. attention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, her. Her story basically ends because um, on one of her trips oh to God. visiting Naoki, yeah. um, they had brought, and remember, Mr. Werther comes with her, like they both go together. They had brought like this huge poster board. And on the poster board, there was like messages from all the kids. And they tried putting it in mm-hmm. code, but it was su- super obvious, except to Mr. Werther, who's over here chugging all these milks like shots. <laughs> Because he's stupid. You know what? I don't believe that he didn't realize what the what the board said. The poster board. I believe There's it. There's no way. I he's believe not it. that stupid. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but the, that's the <laughs> thing, too. Like, 
Okay, just to clarify, because we didn't even mention it. None of the class drinks milk anymore. So milk is offered to the class every single day. And no one drinks it in class. But fucking Mr. Werther's like one after another. Like just drinking these like, oh, milk is so great. Guys, I love milk. Let's adopt a cow for class. He's like, <laughs> he's like, are you sure you don't want one? You know what's better for me? More milk for me, guys. I know. <laughs> but um, he, I don't think he's a bad person. Because everyone is unreliable in the story. So it could be that Mizuki just didn't view him in a good way. But who knows, you know, because I, well, I don't know. Don't forget that um, Shuya, who is the inventor, he also invented this like, was it a ring or a bracelet? It was something that went on. It was on like her. a watch. And right. And like it would like buzz or something or it would vibrate when somebody was lying. Mm hmm. And she asked the teacher, like, oh, do you, like, actually care about what's going on with Naoki? And he said, like, of course I care or something like that. And, and they, like, buzzed. So she was like, oh. We also have to care. realize that with, like, lie detectors, it makes your heart leap when any irregulation happens. So he could have also just been feeling like, oh, shit, I almost got caught that I'm asking their old teacher for help, you know? <laughs> Like, yeah, so I kind of took it with like a grain of salt. But um, this huge poster, uh-uh. I trust you yeah, <laughs> with my whole heart. I like, yeah. trust him as an inventor. Mm. Me too. Actually, he's like my fave. Actually, actually I don't want to say that. Um, <laughs> no, no, so, no, no. <laughs> so Mr. Werther takes this poster uh, with Mizuki to Na- Naoki. And this poster by all the students just says, like, never forget your past. Everyone knows it never goes away. Like, very obvious shit that is supposed to come off as subtle and leaves it. And then, like, um, you know, it's been four months. Naoki's not coming out. So on their last visit, when they're leaving their final letters, Mizuki decides to leave a letter, too, where she mentions, like, that he does not have HIV. Like, it was never it was never in the milk. Maybe that will help him yeah. to go to school. Um, mm-hmm. In their final visit, as soon as the mom is closing the door, Mr. Werther holds the door open and is like, just to let you know, everyone was bullying Shuya. And, like, honestly... Not really a big issue because I solved it. And I hope that that makes you strong enough to come back to school. Okay? Okay. He's like, thanks to me and the power of love, they stopped. Oh, and now we- everyone's friends again. We didn't even finish talking about how he handled the bullying. Because after like that whole bullying oh, yeah. thing happened, the next day when all the kids came back to school, someone had written Mizuki and Shuya's name on the board with a heart. And he handled it by saying, like, you know what, guys? Some teachers, getting a little emotional, some teachers might call this <laughs> bullying, but I call it fucking jealousy. Okay? Shuya, oh, stand up. You're right. <laughs> Shuya, stand up. Look at this boy. The most perfect boy. Good grades. I've looks ever amazing. Seen. Super athletic. Better than Yusuke, I might say. You know, I fucking love Yusuke. I got you, Yusuke. But he's like, Shuya's everything. And you guys are just jealous of how amazing he is. So, you know what? Mm-hmm. A teacher would probably handle this. But I hope that you guys as a class can figure it out yourselves. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, 10 out of 10. I couldn't have, could not have handled that better myself. Dude, my God, dude. I was driving when I was listening to this. And when that happened, I was like, Siri, <laughs> my phone, like, like, you know, popped up on my on my car. And I was like, open uh-huh. memos, like start a memo. And I was just like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I just like was cussing out my own car. <laughs> Fucking people next to me were like, what the fuck is wrong with her? <laughs> I was so angry, right. dude. Who the fuck handles bullying like that? Oh. I wouldn't know how to handle bullying, honestly. I'm not, not going like- to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. You know what? <laughs> I would Here. probably do something worse. I'd be like, you guys are just being so mean. Like, leave them alone. <laughs> leave Lila. Brittany alone. I know. Me? Dude. <laughs> fucking, if I had to handle it, I'd be like, he's getting bullied? Work. Okay. Time for math guy. <laughs> I bully him. I bully him worse. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know You're what? I give me some of this. because <laughs> he's a little bitch. <laughs> 
scientist scientist ass <laughs> Albert Einstein looking ass <laughs> Fucking doesn't drink milk looking ass. Bones weak as fuck. She'd be like, in- <laughs> Should be like invent something better, bitch. Oh, oh, you invented a coin well, purse that I- had a little electricity? Hmm. Hmm. No one's gonna want that, bitch. <laughs> Work, play. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't know like, that. I'd like to imagine that Mr. Werther was like one of those teachers, like, you know. He's like writing on the board and he's like, and that's why X equals 36 guys work. Slay. Pussy. <laughs> no, wait, don't say pussy. <laughs> he probably would. Okay, everyone. He's that type of teacher. You're going to have to, like, instead of putting your brains into it, you're going to have to put your whole bakussy into this, okay? Oh my God. Your bakussy. <laughs> he's me. He's me. Oh my God. <laughs> Damn. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Guys, What's go ahead on? and take your Are you quiz. A fan now? Go ahead and take your quiz. I'm going to go ahead and stand in the back and film a few TikTok dances. Please do not bother me. You know, this is my moment. If you show up in the back of my video and someone says that you look great, fuck you. It's about me. <laughs> I'm the star. <laughs> uh-huh. But anyway. Uh, I'm but so pretty sorry. much this. Hold on. Hold on. But pretty much this chapter ends with them doing their last visit with. Uh, so it was Mizuki and the teacher. And like Chelly said, he's like, no more bullies. Everyone's friends. And then Mizuki pretty much reveals that that was the night that Naoki kills his mother. Mm. Which, oh my God, every fucking chapter, dude, I'm just like mouth wide open, jaw on the floor. I'm like, how can this keep going? What more can go wrong? Dude, and it doesn't end there because remember Mizuki also mentions like, oh, by the way, I um got a... I was able to get some potassium cyanide. So I'm going to test it just in case I ever need to use it on myself. Uh, might as well test it on Mr. Werther because she's basically saying like, you know, he kind of was the reason this happened. He didn't give a fuck. And mm-hmm. that's that's how it yeah. ends. She's like, yeah, might as well. <sighs> dude. Oh, crazy. dude. There's a line that she says. Uh, it's near the middle. But she she addresses this line is like specifically addressing Miss Moriguchi, like her teacher. And she says, I used to not understand why the court would take trials, because why would you do a trial for someone who's clearly guilty? Like, why, why do we have to stand there and watch a lawyer defend someone who we know already did it? You know, there's no point. But then she was like, but there is a point because it's not for the victims it's not for the perpetrator it's not for any of that it's for the people who are watching because the point of trials Mm -hmm. is to allow people to know that you are not supposed to take law into your own hands this is where it gets handled and i Mm -hmm. thought it was very interesting for her to bring that up because after figuring out that naoki killed his mom it kind of like as a reader it's like oh fuck this is the repercussion of like or the consequences of Miss Moriguchi's, like just her quitting, her doing this, and her revealing it, and mm-hmm. I, I was still and, team and Moriguchi, him, <laughs> and him believing that he had AIDS. Mm-hmm. I was still was like, what I took this too. I I know the teacher wasn't perfect, but I kind of was like, okay, I I do want to like her. So the fact that this happened, it kind of made me question, like, okay. Is she going to come back and figure out that she made it worse? And how would she react? Mm-hmm. Like, that was my thing. <laughs> so yeah. I I wasn't sure if to, like, you know, vouch for her, I guess. <laughs> so it was, like, it was tough. It was tough. Mm-hmm. Um, chapter um, three is in the perspective. The next one was the, was the benevolent one, which is in the perspective of Naoki's sister. Okay. For, and for this people, chapter wait, pretty wait, wait, wait. much... For people like me, <laughs> for people like me, can uh, you define benevolent? Uh, benevolent is like someone who is kind and does things for the kindness of others. Because uh, I know that malevolent is someone who's evil, so benevolent would be the opposite of that. I know that benevolent can also be seen as um, mm, what's what, the word someone with no of? faults. I would assume. I mean, she has nothing to do with this, so that's what I would take it I'm as. Trying to think of a, oh, altruistic. That's the word I was trying to think mm-hmm. of. Like just like you said, no faults, nothing's wrong with them. The perfect person. 
So, yeah, so um, this chapter pretty much just serves as a way for us to get into Naoki's mother's head. So his mother would have like a diary. And so the Naoki sister, I forgot her name. She would go through this diary because she was just like, how could this have happened? Like, there was just no way. Like, I don't understand. And so through the diary, she pretty much learns that her brother was acting really strange. Like he was being very OCD. He didn't want his mother to touch his plates to like mix their clothes together. Um, And then he would just go through like erratic behaviors. And then near the end, he just didn't even, he just lost complete motivation. He didn't want to shower. He didn't want to leave his room. Well, he hardly ever left his room, but like, honestly, it was like his cave. Mm -hmm. He did not want to do anything. But then also he would snap at his mom um when she would try to you know get him to you know do stuff and he was just like no and so eventually the mother convinces him to go to like a therapy and i forgot exactly what they diagnosed it as do you remember i don't but i remember her like basically saying that after that it was getting better like in her eyes it was Mm -hmm. getting better because um This whole time, like, while he's having, like, these little moments of, like, tantrums and lashing out, she keeps saying, like, Mm -hmm. oh, it's Moriguchi's fault because she was a single mother and she came and blamed my son for something he obviously didn't do, you know? Like, she she always kind of framed it that way. Oh, my God. She coddled him. She Mm -hmm. hella coddled him. Mm-hmm. And then, everything was always the teacher's fault, like or anybody else's fault. Like, do you Nalki remember was a perfect little saint in her mind? Before his therapy started, um, he had a red bean paste cake, and when he ate it, and he started he to cry, and he started saying, "Like, I mm-hmm. never knew it was this good. I never knew." And in her eyes, mm-hmm. it was like, "Oh my God, look at him! He's just he feels so guilty for that girl who he didn't kill, by the way." Um, she just feels so guilty yeah. that she never got to experience this joy. Oh my god, I have such a great son. And yeah. after well, the therapy Oh yeah, in session, her mind oh, in her mind all of these behaviors are because he feels guilty. Like that's what she's taking it as. So that's why she's okay with him not going to school cuz he she thinks that he's like trying to get through the guilt mm-hmm. of it. But she doesn't think that he's responsible. She thinks that it's solely on Shuya. So after the therapy session, he does end up like doing little things at first. Like he would come down and cook for himself. Sometimes he would come and do like a little thing and she would be like, look at him. Oh my God. He's really like, he's really changing. And the one that got her was when he took a shower and it was like a long shower because he had he hadn't showered in two months and he came out like bald, like he shaved his head in the shower But to her, it was like, this is a step forward because, you know, he had to do that because his hair was so long, you know, but it just shows that he's like ready to move on. I'm such a good mom. She cut. Yeah. Remember, she cut his hair while he was sleeping. And then. Well, no, she trimmed. so mad. He trimmed a little. Well, we don't know that yet. Yeah. But he she trimmed a little bit of it, but he shaved it. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah um i I just took that as like oh he was so angry he was like you know i'm just gonna cut this off then i didn't even consider that i just thought he was like shave day (laughs) shave day sunday but um she also there was like a point where he so it was so obvious to the readers that you know he's depressed he's spiraling Mm -hmm. all of this is happening and she was just so fucking like didn't even realize it delusional about this and there was a fucking point where the sister came over to visit to reveal that she was pregnant and they were gonna celebrate and everything and he was like nah i'm gonna stay in my room and i you know Mm -hmm. and whatever i don't feel good and he leaves and in the mom's eyes he doesn't he's so young he doesn't understand eight so he's like i need to be away from everybody Mm -hmm. we also don't know that yet though like to in this diary entry like it's just viewed as like oh yeah i'm just gonna go and the mom in her eye she's like oh my god i never noticed that yusuke he's not the one i knew because the one i knew was a child this is a man Mm -hmm. the fact that he's so considerate to not come down because he's feeling ill because my daughter's coming or his sister's coming and she's pregnant that is so considerate Mm -hmm. 
he's such an I'm such a great mom. Like she's so like yeah. fucking delusional. Yeah. I don't she is think really delusional. It, it drives me crazy. It doesn't hit her until the very end where um he just tells her. He's just like, "Oh yeah, I have AIDS." Um yeah, she gave me AIDS much, uh, and he also reveals that he bliss. did kill her, right? The girl. Yeah, yeah, he did. He was like, "Actually, it wasn't Shuya cuz she um opened her eyes and I just threw her in the pool." Mm-hmm. And then she and then she was just like, "No, but like, but you were just scared, right? Like, you were just so scared and and you didn't mean to, right?" And he was like, "No, nah. I meant it." Yeah. I'm a, <laughs> yeah, and she just and so because of this, she starts freaking out, and she's just like, "Oh my god, uh, maybe I'm a bad mother." And of course, the only way to fix this is like she is like determined to just kill him and then kill herself because, you know, she she feels almost responsible for mm-hmm. what happened. But it, we don't get to but see even that. Her re- oh, go ahead. Even her reasoning doesn't really make any sense, though. I think her reasoning was, or I think the point of her wanting to like get him to die basically was just to not have to live with that. Cause in her eyes, she's a perfect Mm -hmm. mom. And if anyone else knew this, it would like wreck her, you know? Destroy her. Mm -hmm. There was also a a moment where he went out, like he went to the store. I didn't really get this point or this part. He, um, used a razor blade to cut himself and was just smearing blood at the convenience store. Do you remember that? Well, I think he was just lashing out. No, like he wanted to just like infect everyone and everything. No, that's how I took it anyway. Probably. He he doesn't bring it up in his part because he does have a part. So I was just kind of like, mm-hmm. it's weird. I wonder if that, I wonder if that was an episode that he doesn't remember, like him as a character. Because that seems like a big thing to do. I mean, yeah. And I, I mean, it makes sense to me if he doesn't remember that. Yep. So, um, yeah, the mom just basically ends with her saying that she might have to take her son away from all of this along with her. Mm-hmm. And that's basically yeah. it. She was so delusional, dude. Um, yeah, she really was. She drove me crazy. And the then fact- I hated how like judgmental she was. Mm hmm. Oh, my God. She kept like p- pushing the blame to everyone else except for her son or her. It was always anyone mm. else in the story. I fucking hated it. She kind of feels like those people, though, that like would never do any like never complain to the person's face, but complain to others because she always complained about oh my Moriguchi God, yes, definitely. to everyone else. But then when she was with Moriguchi, mm. she's like, yeah, I just told her like. I'm sorry for your loss, but yeah, I just, I felt like I had to say it, you know? And it's like, no, you're just two faced. Mm -hmm. That's what you are. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, oh, yeah, 100%. Oh, God. I felt for Naoki. Yeah, so that was that chapter. I I did. You felt for Naoki? I felt bad for him in this chapter, like seeing him fucking spiral into insanity and the mom Mm -hmm. just not understanding that he needed help. Oh my god, wait, can I also bring this is a good moment to bring it up. But in the second chapter, which was Mizuki's point of view, she ends that chapter by saying, like, Oh Moriguchi, how do you feel about your revenge now? After um her mm-hmm. saying that Naoki killed his mother. I was like, damn, that's I crazy. I don't think she gives a fuck. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Dude. It's She's out there sunbathing. <laughs> I know. Fucking drinking all the milk she wants. Oh okay, gosh. so the next chapter is called The Seeker, which is Naoki's point of view. So why do you think it was called The Seeker? I don't know. he was seeking friends? I, I thought he was, he was... seeking company? I thought he was seeking, like, In reason. the beginning, no? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I thought he was seeking reason. And that has to do with, like, him seeking reason to have friends. Him seeking reason to, like, yeah. continue living basically i feel like that was just always him he was never in a spot in life where he felt satisfied ever and that sucks (laughs) like he yeah because this when the chapter started he was described as someone who was not really that bright and he didn't really have friends 
Yeah. And it sucks because he even says like, when my mom compliments me now, the only compliment she can say is nice. So like to anyone, yeah, which like, is yeah, the worst. They don't give any. You know what? Everyone gets like awards for being smart. But where's the good boy award? Good, maybe I a know good boy award? that is there, line. Is there an award for people named Naoki? They should give him that one because he really aced that one. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, God. I, I tried really hard for that one. <laughs> it sucks, dude. It sucks that he knows that he's inadequate in in his perspective because he tries really hard to like be something, you know, and um, his whole deal with Moriguchi, which the teacher, which is the teacher um, that caused kind of a strain in his family was the fact that he got in trouble, even though it like wasn't his fault. It was like a little thing. It was like a, a fight mm-hmm. that he had gotten in. So like to him it's like even my teacher doesn't like me like what there's no point and so um he we start off this chapter like kind of seeing how paranoid he is like he feels like he's always being watched that there's like no hope for anything and he says like the proof of life was the fear of death like to him it's like like i'm alive and i don't i have no idea what to fucking do with this and he reminisces when him and Shuya like come up with this plan because Shuya approached him first and like mm-hmm. became friends with him. And he was like, oh, my God, Shuya, the A plus kid wants to be my friend. I fucking love it. And mm-hmm. he tries really hard to keep Shuya as a friend. He's always like, here, my mom made cookies. Also, like she's going to like bake a cake later. And she said it was going to be your favorite flavor. Can you tell me your favorite flavor again? So I can call her real quick. You know, he was like such so trying so hard to keep a friend. And then they have mm-hmm. a conversation about Shuya's invention, which was the little coin purse that can shock someone who's trying to steal. And uh he was like, Oh, we gotta test it on someone. Is there anyone you would like to hurt? And then he brings up the teachers no, first. He, at that point, Shuya had already gone through like he like won an award for it I and mean, he was in the papers and all that but that's when the the lunacy uh case happened where that girl poisoned her whole family so he mm-hmm. was kind of like overshadowed and so shuya was telling naoki like oh my god i have to go bigger i have to do something better so he was telling him like oh i i amped up the electricity so i i want to see how well it works and so naoki was like super excited because now he's you know now he's involved with with a friend and he's like oh my god he wants my input Mm -hmm. and so he um naoki first brings up the teachers and he's like nah i don't want to do it to the male teacher moriguchi didn't really have a good response to it and i was like well what if we do it to moriguchi's daughter because she's here and she's always by the pool feeding the dog and so they come up with this plan to go over there and um become friends with the little girl manami and then mm-hmm. shock her, like give her the coin purse that they're going to make it look like a merch item from like her favorite cartoon. And then it'll and shock it her. It was actually Naoki. Who, yeah, it was actually Naoki who came up with this whole plan, though, because he was there when Moriguchi and her daughter were at, were at a store and Monami really wanted a certain coin purse. And so it, I don't know, like I thought it was interesting that he was the one who came up with the whole elaborate plan, right? Mm-hmm. of and how then, they were going to approach her and how they would get her to be excited about it. It's funny because when it came to the day, he he thinks to himself that like, oh, I started the dialogue. Wow. Like, you know, look at me starting the dialogue. And then he would think like, oh, um, Shuya took my dialogue, but it's okay. It's okay. Oh, he's winging it now? Okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And then when Manami finally falls and is shocked, um, Naoki's like freaking out because it's like oh my god you killed her you killed her and then Shuya just says like yeah tell everyone go ahead and by the way I hate hanging out with people like you like I, I just don't like it yeah You're, I don't get it and whatever and then Shuya leaves but and he, he also says like oh um I wouldn't tell anyone that you're my friend anyway so it's yeah, kind so, of implying like oh it's just gonna be my fault yep and kind of, yeah kind of like telling him like you're not gonna be brought up anyway And that makes Naoki super mad because it's like, oh, you don't think I could do it? Like, you don't think I could do this? 
And I really liked reading Naoki's perspective because he would like latch on to a negative word and repeat it multiple times. So he would just be like, mm-hmm. I'm a failure, yeah. failure, failure. You're calling me a failure. You think I can't do this? And he, um, as soon as Shuya leaves, he notices that the little girl is still alive. And um, yeah, at this point, he's like, oh, my God, because he was going to toss her her body in the water with the intention of like, just. I don't I think he saw that she was alive, right? Like he knew. He wanted it to look like an accident so that Shuya wouldn't be, you know, seen as the murderer. So he wanted to sabotage his whole plan because he knew that Shuya wanted to be a murderer or, you know, yes. he that's that was the intention, right? So he was like, you know, what? I'm going to mess up his plan. And so he like picks her up and then that's when she's like opening her eyes, but she still can't really move from the shock. And he just throws her in the pool. And I think even in this moment, he's saying like, oh, well, you know what? Now I still ruined his plan because he couldn't even finish the job. Like I'm the one who killed her, not mm-hmm. not Shuya. And so then the next day when it's revealed that she drowned, Shuya goes up and mm-hmm. is like, why would you do that? Like, what did you do? And he was just mm-hmm. like, oh, well, how does he say it? He's basically like kind of gloating, right? I think he says he says the same line to him. No, he's like, well, tell anyone they're not going to believe you anyway. So yep. something like that. Yes, he does. He does. So then after the entire class has that meeting with Moriguchi where she reveals like she has her confession, um, he mm-hmm. just can't get out of his room. And he is so paranoid. Mm-hmm. He feels like everyone is watching him. And even when school starts and he hears that there's like a new teacher, he just refuses to get out of his room. This, I don't know how much I want to say, but after... Well, a lot of what what happened to him is revealed in the mom's chapter, which was before this one. But I thought it was really interesting seeing the reason that he showered, because in the mom's perspective, it's like, oh, my gosh, he's taking a step forward. But in his perspective, remember that he had gotten his hair trimmed by the mom. He didn't know that that was the mom's doing. So when he woke up with hair on his pillow, in his mind, he was like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, the part of me that's growing that is showing that I'm alive is coming off. Like, it's, yeah. it's I'm dying. And he was like, oh, my God, what do I do? So he goes to the bathroom and starts, like, scrubbing himself clean while, like, repeating, like, failure, failure, like a lot of things to himself and shaves his head because that was the part of him that was still alive. So in his eyes, he's like Mm. now basically dead because he took everything away. When he reveals everything to his mom about everything that he had done and the mom starts to go like, oh, but you did it to protect him, right? Like you, 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 that's why you did it. You didn't do it because you wanted to kill her. In his mind, even though he doesn't say it, he does think like, I just wanted to one up Shuya. That's why I did it. I did something that he couldn't do. But in reality, Mm. he just goes like, call the police. Can you call the police? Can you call the police? And that was his whole thing. He just wanted to get arrested. That was even oh, the reason he, he was, smeared yeah, the blood. that's what I was going to say. Yeah. That's it just hit me. He was trying to get arrested, but he wouldn't get arrested for what he was doing at the at the store. Mhm. So he just really really wanted to get arrested. So at the very end, um we're at the point where Mr. Werther and Mizuki come to visit the house. And we hear him say the whole like, Shuya's good. You know, he was getting bullied. But now because of my great teaching, he's not. And it like, I think it, how does Naoki react to that? Not well, because he, didn't he feel like his safe space was being, wait, was that his point of view? Hold on. Let me look. Oh, yes, it was because, um, he felt he like just his safe made space was being like compromised, invaded. No, yeah, because oh, yeah, he basically revealed it to like the entire street, like what was going on. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when the mom comes up, because the teacher was speaking really loud. Yes. When the mom comes up, um, she he's kind of expecting her to like talk him into going to school, but she comes up with mm-hmm. a knife and is just kind of like, okay, you know. We did what we could, but we're, we're going to go with our grandpa- your grandparents now. And he's confused. Yeah, like, he's like dead. Why, would, why would we do that? You know, and then he's like, just like, oh, you know, 
I just feel like we failed what we were doing here. Or like I failed you. Like she was trying to say something like that. But then in his mind, he got triggered by the word fail. Because at first he was down. He was like, yeah. me dying with my mom? Yeah, that's what that's what I want to do because it'll end this suffering. But mm-hmm. then as soon as she said fail, he was just like, failure? Are you, do you think I'm a failure? Do you think I can't do this? And he blanks out. And just when he wakes up or like, you know, is out of that, he realizes that he killed his own mom. And it's really sad because the the way that the chapter ends too is kind of just like, no like take me with you and like he just wishes that he could just like go to sleep and wake up and just like smell be able to smell his mother's cooking like the breakfast but that's not gonna ever happen for him and even at the very end like after he had killed her and after all of that he started to disassociate because he saw he didn't know who he was and he saw Mm -hmm. someone like strangers approach this person who was there and the stranger was like, Naoki, Naoki, it's me, your sister. And then he was like, I don't know who this Naoki is. I don't know who this girl is. But And I don't like that they call me that. Yeah. He, he said something like, I don't like that they call me that mm. name. So he was just completely gone by the end of it. And dude, I mm-hmm. feel like out of this book, the biggest victim was Naoki. I don't know. I just feel like he needed help a long time ago. Like, even before all of this, the mom should have been like coddling your kid does not help. Like, it actually is the negative effect. Like, it's so sad to me. Hey, we're not at the end yet. Hold on. Okay. Because the next chapter is The Believer, which is Shuya's chapter, which, like, getting to the end, I'm assuming that The Believer means that he just really wants to believe that he can reach his mother, which, come to find out, that's the whole reason he's doing this, is to get the attention of his mother. Yeah, because he used to live with his mom and his dad. And in his Mm -hmm. perspective, his mom was his whole world. She was so smart. She was so great. It's because they're they're a lot alike. So he's an inventor and his mom is an inventor. So Mm -hmm. he knew that his mother was super brilliant, but she had to give everything up because she, you know, had a family. And he remembers that one time, like a school wanted to get her to work for them or something along those lines and he remembers her saying like oh i can't because i'm my mother and so he knew that he was holding her back but then slowly she started to become kind of well actually really abusive towards him yeah but it was even when he talked about the abuse he never talked about it in like a way of hating her he he was just kind of like yeah she would do that you know and it was like brought up so like casually and and also what was crazy is that he would say it like that. Like, yeah, she would like slap me, but then she would, sometimes she would hold me or caress me. Mm-hmm. And, and then she would say she was sorry. So it almost felt like he was brainwashed um, into believing that that was just his mother's affection. Like that's just how she showed him that she loved him. And remember, this is Shuya. This is student A, the one who would go to school even after the murder and was like, Top grade, super smart, very reserved. Mm -hmm. So the fact that all of this is going on behind the scenes, I was shocked. Like, I didn't think this was going to be his backstory. Same. Same. I I didn't know what to expect, Um, especially because I felt like with Naoki, there was some backstory, but I felt like with Shuya, it was completely unexpected. Like, I didn't know Mm -hmm. how much he craved his mother's love. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to um, kind of quickly mention. So his parents end up divorcing, right? And mm-hmm. she kind of like just does does like a she signs where she doesn't have any contact with Shuya, and that was kind of like the agreement that they had, right? Yeah, with the divorce. And she did hug Shuya, and yeah, she told him like, "Oh, if you if you really need me, I'll be there," but. I can't really be around. Sorry. Do you think, I don't know why I didn't consider this, but she lost custody to him, right? Because of her abusive tendencies. That's what happened. Yeah. Just because, I mean, also she was very erratic too. Wasn't she just that way with her husband as well? Mm Mm-hmm. I didn't didn't even consider that, but that was the reason. But Shuya was devastated, but knew that he couldn't hold Mm -hmm. his mom back from doing what she wanted to do. But because he... And it's kind of interesting to see how he would describe 
his dad's new girlfriend and then new wife. Uh, Because to him, he was like, oh, my gosh, she's so dumb. But you know what? At least she's honest about her her stupidity. (laughs) And he like at one point he was just like, yeah, I've been hanging out with him a lot. I feel like I'm becoming dumb. Like I'm like becoming dumb with him. (laughs) Yeah. But um, he talks about how he really wants his mom to know how he's doing. He wants to contact his mom. So he thinks like if I do something super scientific and she sees it then maybe she'll be like, that's my son. I need to go talk to my son. Cause she, like this one science yeah. thing is happening. And um, Mori Gucci's partner was going to be like part of that. I think like he was going to be part of the, the judging of the science experiments. And mm-hmm. um, he was going to write a journal about it. And the journal is very like uh, everyone reads it. So when he does his science experiment, Remember, that's at the same time that the lunacy incident happens, the one with the girl who killed her whole family. And then he goes like, oh, my God, that's totally overshadowing my achievements. So she's Mm -hmm. not going to be able to see this. So the only way I could get her to see me is if I do something really bad and make it like Mm kind of frame it so that she was the reason I did this. So because then she would have a reason to come. be. Yeah, that's why it had to be through an invention, because obviously, like, if it was just like a murder, they would blame the dad. They wouldn't even think about the mother. But if if he showed that he was as brilliant as his mother, then they would connect. Oh, maybe this has something to do with the mom. And so that's his thought process at this point. He's like, okay, how do I get my mom to notice me again? Mm -hmm. So he um, starts a website in order to, like, talk about his invention he posts a bunch of like dead animals in order to like gain traction but also kind of like he's like Mm -hmm. building himself to be a murderer basically he befriends naoki who he really does not like and uh commits this murder and he's so proud of himself that it worked and we see the same thing him going like tell everyone tell everyone i did this and he's so proud of himself Mm -hmm. but then the next day figuring out that it's deemed an accidental drowning he's so upset he's upset because that was the plan right that that would be the the murder yes that would catch his mother's attention but it didn't work yeah so so then the next school year happens and he's like uh he talks about the confession that moriguchi made in chapter one and he's just like yeah she kind of over dramatized some parts but I thought it was a really good show. Um, a really nice touch mm-hmm. at the end with the whole HIV thing. Like, really nice touch. Um, and you know what's crazy? He what? he almost like was happy when he believed that he had AIDS because he was like, "Oh my god! Well, if my mom thinks that I'm dying, then she'll pay attention to me." Mm-hmm. Like in his brain, he was like, "Maybe this is another way for me to get her back." Yep. And so, um. Three months later, four months later, however long, it's the ninth grade. He has tested himself and realized that he has a negative test, all of this. But we see his perspective of his interactions with Mizuki. And that face that he had made that made Mizuki feel like he was a good person. The only reason he made that face, because it was when she had thrown the milk at his face and he felt the milk hit him. And she was like, wow, he's really thinking about like what we're doing is wrong as well but in reality he was like oh it reminded me of like when my mom would strike me and it's just like oh, i just yeah. felt so much emotion he was like fond memories oh my god yeah dude it's crazy that's and, crazy and his whole thing with uh, mizuki he was just like yeah i just kept her around like she wasn't the worst person i like confessed my mm-hmm. feelings to her and i told her that she makes me feel heard but like whatever she talks a lot and she uh got potassium cyanide and in mizuki's chapter it made it seem like she came up with the idea for the potassium cyanide mm-hmm. but then it's revealed in his chapter yeah. that she only did it because she was super like hyper fixated with um the lunacy incident so like Mm -hmm. in his like to him everyone is just kind of like dumb and he sees mizuki like that too so (laughs) i thought um, it was kind of funny though when 
uh, Mizuki tells him, like she reveals to him, like, oh, well, you know, Naoki was actually my first love. And he was so offended. <laughs> he was like, what? Naoki's so freaking stupid and she likes me too. Like it offended him to be on the same like caliber as Naoki. Do you remember what the triggering thing that Mizuki said that caused the ending of this chapter? To him. Yeah, wasn't she like coming for him for being so for being obsessed with his mom? Wasn't that what it was? I think it was. Because she makes a comment and it sets him off and he basically just chokes her until he hears like a pop. Yeah. Which is so scary. Yeah, so he he kills her pretty much. That's why she's a martyr. And buries her. Which is crazy. Oh yeah, it all tied mm-hmm. together. I was like fucking I get it now. <laughs> And Mm -hmm. so he was like, okay, well, I have to do something big, bigger than just Mizuki dying because everyone's just kind of like she's missing. She was so irrelevant that it's not really causing a big deal. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm just going to bomb the school. So he gets a bomb. Well, but before, wait, wait, before he bombs the school, he actually ends up trying. Oh, it's because it's because Mizuki calls him a coward remember he's like you are trying all of these elaborate schemes to get your mother's attention but you know where she works you can just go over there talk to her but you're too much of a coward you want her to come to you instead yep so that's why it set him off and so he does end up going to his mother's work and that's when he finds out that his mother has had has like a new family now and it pisses him off because he's like wait i thought that she didn't want a family like that's what was holding her back but really like she just left me and had is pregnant with someone like another baby pretty much Mm -hmm. so that's why he's like you know i'm just gonna bomb the school and then um he like leaves a letter right or i don't really know oh yeah he says he says that he'll bomb the school but then he writes like a a love letter to his own mom and posts it on the internet on his website (laughs) yeah oh Oh, my my god But then he like presses the button. He presses the button, but it doesn't detonate. Well, at the end of this chapter, it just says he set off the bomb. And then that's how it ends. No, he's pressing it and it doesn't go off, remember? Doesn't that continue in chapter six? Well, yeah, but well, we know what's going on afterwards. But to him, it's like, oh, my God, what the hell? Why isn't this shit working? (laughs) Oh wait, no, you're Dude, right. Dude, I love right, right. I do love the way that the next chapter fucking starts. It's called The Evangelist. Um I love <laughs> Moriguchi is such a bitch. <laughs> like she gives no fucks. Like she no, literally she starts does not. the chap she char- starts the chapter by making it seem like, oh Shuya, it's your mother. Just kidding. You wish it was, huh, loser? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just before we start, before we start. An evangelist is a person who seeks to convert others' faiths by preaching. So it's usually a religious term. But I feel like all these Mm -hmm. terms have been pretty religious. So it's someone Mm -hmm. who seeks to convert others. So I I believe that's a very good title for this chapter because she is a preacher. Like, dude, the fact that her chapters are just dialogue. (laughs) I know, literally. She just just has a lot to say. Dude, that's so funny that-, that you brought that up, though, because I totally forgot that she did that. It's your mom. No, it's not, bitch. <laughs> just kidding. I just thought that it's called the evangelist because it's like a step further than a saint. So it's like, oh, well, I started off as a saint thinking that I'm a saint. But then like one step further, it's like, oh, well, you know what? Now I'm a full blown like whatever is above that, which would be the evangelist. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, is she truly, though? Because (laughs) turns out this whole time, while we thought she was just gone away drinking martinis or just leche out of martinis. I thought she was sunbathing. (laughs) Yeah. Turns out she was watching behind the scenes the whole Mm -hmm. time. She knows everything. She knows about Mizuki. She knows about Shuya's mom. She knows everything about Naoki. She knows about Mr. Werther. Everything. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she is basically explaining to him, like, yeah, Mr. Werther, him handling that bullying issue, I told him to do it like that. The the blood not being in your uh, milk, that was because my husband took it out. But I would have done it, bitch. I would have done it. Well, and, isn't that like, the she, reason why she's still there? Because she, she, she mentioned that she would have let everything go, but then her partner, which is Manami's father 
um, had mentioned to her like, well, you know what? I knew what you were doing, but I didn't want you to be charged for anything. Like, that's not the way that I wanted you to live your life. So he pretty much and, like switched the milks or something because he didn't he also want her mentioned, to suffer. Yes. And he also mentioned like they're so young, they could change. Yeah, Like there's still yeah, time for he- them to change. He and, did say um, that, huh? Which is crazy Maury- to me because it's like, she's also your daughter, but also like you weren't around really, like ever. Mm-hmm. I think he only met her like twice. And he yep. hugged, the first time he hugged her was when she was already dead. Yes. It was just so fucked up. But Moriguchi mm. says something. I'm so glad you brought that up because I almost forgot this part. Um, After saying that the husband or her partner had switched the milks and he had said that, you know, there it's possible for Naoki and Shuya to change. She said it as I I took matters in my own hands, but she said the exact same thing that Mizuki had brought up, that the reason we have trials is because people shouldn't take things in their own hands. And mm-hmm. she did exactly that. Like she yeah. she um tried to solve this issue by going further and kind of just manipulating the situation from the outside. And her biggest manipulation was through Mr. Werther, the teacher, because Mm -hmm. while he was watching that class, he would constantly call Moriguchi for advice. And when Shuya was getting bullied, um, her advice was like, let them handle it. They could do it as a class. It's fine. Just let them handle it. Just, you know, don't make it a big deal. And it was like she was fueling this fire. And she also obsessively followed Shuya's website. So she, she knew you know oh my what God. he was doing. That's that's why I laugh because like she literally came for him over the love letter to his mother. She was just like, "Damn, I can't believe you really you really posted that cringe love letter to your own mom." Embarrassing. Yeah. But if she prints it out. I fucking graded it. I graded that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Took out my good pen too. No, well, but, he was um, a good student, so it probably would have gotten an A. <sighs> I graded a it. B, Congratulations. Just for the cringe. It was pretty good. <laughs> Made me cry, but you know, whatever. Cried because you're a little bitch. Um, no, but it, she mentions like, you know, Naoki killed his mom and he was very affected by this. But she's mm-hmm. just kind of like, but I just don't know what would get you because you want attention. You want this murder. Well, um, she when she spoke about Naoki... Um, she did mention that him killing his mom was unexpected, but all it really showed to her was that he really is a murderer. So she didn't really feel uh, bad about yeah. it. It was kind of just like, no. well, yeah, that's what he is. So I'm not surprised. Yep. And sh- th- then she brings up like she doesn't want Shuya to be satisfied for getting his like murder show that he really, really wants. So then mm-hmm. she's like, but yeah, I saw your... um." your post about your mom that you love so much, you know, your bomb, um, it did work. You know, it's just not here. It's just not here. Yeah. And then it's like piecing together. And it's, it's so scary because while she's saying this, she's like, look at me. Don't, don't listen to the sirens. No, listen to me. You know, like think people are coming and, uh, yeah, it just ends with the fact that, uh, Shuya killed his own mom. Yeah, because he she tells him that oh it's not here it's actually on in building K, in yeah where your mother works pretty much. Mm-hmm. Which and is we don't so get to see Shuya's crazy. reaction. <laughs> yeah, we don't. That's just how it ends, which is fucking wild. Dude, can I be very honest with you? Us talking yeah. about this is making me feel scared. Like I've been like kind of jumpy. <laughs> Really? Oh my god, I feel you. Okay, let's wrap it up. Damn, we've been talking. We've been talking. I haven't looked at the I just time. want to say, damn, I... Every single chapter, the way it ended, bangers. I was just like, fuck, what is happening? Every single time the chapter would end, I was like, damn, this is mm-hmm. this is getting worse. I don't... I cannot... I cannot predict the ending. And I really couldn't. This is getting worse, I had worse, no idea where this was going. Work. <laughs> Vibes. <laughs> seriously um i i was kind of nervous to read this book because Mm -hmm. i thought you wouldn't like it and i I still don't know how you feel about it the fact that you've talked about it so like extensively now i feel like you do like it 
But I every mm. time I recommend books, I'm like, it's going to be another Alexandra Bracken lore. Like, oh my God. I get so nervous. I feel so bad because, um, so Chelly and I, we I feel like we take turns sometimes when we recommend books. In the beginning, damn girl, you were recommending some bad ones. <laughs> but I honestly, was. I've recommended some pretty bad ones too. So we're even, I think. I know, but like the difference is like the bad ones you recommend are so fun to talk about. But the bad ones I recommend, we just end up getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, but it's fun. But, um, uh, but this was definitely I, different, though. This was different. Yeah. For me. I, I did not know what to expect either, but I had a feeling that it was going to be like a thriller mystery just based on the cover. So I was mm-hmm. like, damn, someone's about to confess something juicy. Wow. So you really did go in blind with like, no, no I did. I nothing. had no idea what this was about. I didn't know anything about this book. Dude, now that we're getting into overall thoughts, were you hooked? Like, did this hook you from the beginning? Yeah, I was so hooked. But I will say that um, sometimes in stories, this is just a personal thing. When I, I do like when we get a scene, right? And then... We get it again in a different per- in a different character's perspective, but sometimes it gets too repetitive for me. So I'm like, you know what? Honestly, I don't even fucking care how he felt. So I'll like kind of like skim a little bit because I'm like, okay, I can kind of get the gist of how he feels about this situation. But mm-hmm. like every single um, perspective, I think added a lot to the overall story. It did. I thought it was really smart way to deliver it but i just fucking love that moriguchi made a comeback at the end like i didn't expect her to come back like as a as a point of view pretty much do you think she was the person who was texting the class with the whole shuya bullying thing because no oh, one yeah, recognized 100%. that number yeah, no it was damn. her she said that it, it was, was? Her, wasn't i'm pretty sure yeah damn okay she was in it. She was in. It. She said, "This is for my daughter." I do feel really bad for her, um, because her daughter was all she had, and then also her partner is dying. So mm-hmm. I understand the anger. But I mean, there were moments where I was like, "Damn, girl, you really just set it off." Like, I don't know. I I, I didn't know how to feel, but I feel like that's good, right? Like not knowing how to feel because getting everyone's perspective by everyone i mean moriguchi and uh the two murderers uh, i thought well there's really no like good one right like everyone's kind of at fault for what happened Mm -hmm. but um, what do you what do you think your overall Uh, score is though um i feel like It's kind of hard to say sometimes because sometimes when you and I talk about a book, sometimes it gets me more excited. You know what I mean? I Um, know. (laughs) It actually scared me a lot (laughs) being here with you today. I'm like a little spooked. I'm I'm a little spooked too, honestly, but it's okay. I'll just like put on like SpongeBob or something and I'll get over it. Um, (laughs) I I really enjoyed this book. It definitely hooked me straight from the beginning. Um, I would read more from this author as of right now i'm kind of leaning towards giving it like a high four or a five i'm not 100 percent sure just yet i kind of want to sit with it a little bit longer you know what's crazy so like a 4.75 or a five damn it's crazy to me because the one thing that made me um think that you would give it a low score was because i remember a while back when we had watched that one movie with the fish You told me that you don't like unreliable narrators. I don't like unreliable narrators. But to me, it wasn't like... So that's the reason I thought you wouldn't like it. But to me, it wasn't like... Okay. It wasn't like, okay, what she said... It's not that it didn't happen. It's just that she doesn't see the whole perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The unreliable narrators that I don't like are the ones where... Kind of like the, the woman in the window... Where it's like, yes. oh, you think something's happening, but the, she's just lying to you. Like you, she's just she's um, not being truthful about this. But mm. this like thing that takes, you know, that's important to like half of the story, pretty much. Okay, I guess there's like a it. certain. You know what I mean? I don't know if I, that makes any sense, but I don't like no, it does narrators, but but in it this does because in this to them, book, they were they were they unreliable right. because they they didn't know 
Like to them, that was their truth. Yeah, exactly. So that's why it didn't really bother me. Wow. I um, I don't even know where to start. I knew I was going to like this book as soon as I finished mm-hmm. chapter one. Uh, because usually when I listen to audiobooks, I struggle a lot. I have to go back a lot and everything. And I was listening to this on my commute back home. And mm-hmm. I was like hooked, dude. I was literally mm-hmm. like, I have to just like, because I had it on my car and I had to get gas. And you know how you have to turn off your car when you get gas. I literally yeah, like disconnected my phone and I'm still listening. Like I was like still on. I was like any moment I need to fucking finish this book. And mm-hmm. um, I just really appreciate like seeing so many perspectives come together. I understand what you mean though with like seeing something play several times in a story. It's just kind of like I get it. I saw what happened. I saw what yeah, happened. I, saw I don't need to see it. And mm-hmm. I did kind of feel like that a bit, but then I, I did really like the interpretations of the incidents that would happen. And mm-hmm. I, I like feel a certain way about Moriguchi. I think she's a very well written character. And I kind of like how everything ties together because like to her, like she was the greatest, like in my perspective, it felt like she thought she was the greatest. Like what she was doing yeah. was right. This had to happen this way. She's an evangelist. She's a saint. She's all of this great stuff. But it's funny because like, I feel like out of all the crimes that happened in this story, hers was the worst one because yeah. she triggered a lot. And it kind of goes back to what Mizuki said with like, the reason we hold trials is because we don't want uh, people to take law into their own hands. And that's what she mm-hmm. did. She took the law into her own hands as soon as she made that confession. And the lunacy trials, the lunacy incident didn't trigger Mizuki. That didn't trigger her because she knew about it beforehand. What triggered her was mm-hmm. the fact that she knew someone who murdered someone and uh, nothing was done about it. They got away with it. So she's like, okay, I'm going to do it too then because they got away with it. Like that's the whole point we have trials. So the people on the outside could see, hey, don't do this shit don't handle it yourself like that's the whole point and like just seeing that moriguchi caused all of that and had no fucking remorse she's like the worst she really character. gave no fucks mm-hmm. and it's funny too because when she would talk i would also be like work bitch so like i was like fucking in it and that like shuya this whole book was painted as someone who was like very charismatic but also super um, manipulative to situations but i feel Mm. like moriguchi's worse because she even kind of fooled us like with her ex i thought she was just the person who was really really sad and the whole Mm. hiv and the blood thing sucks but it wasn't something that was gonna affect them at the moment you know what i mean yeah it was something Mm -hmm. that would kind of affect them later in life and you know just really think about it but nah, Honestly, she was for, out for fucking for a, blood. Literally. For a second there, I thought that maybe she didn't do it just to like pretty much fuck with them. Like when before we got to the last chapter, I was like, oh my God, she didn't do it. That's almost worse. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh my God, they think that they have it. And so yep. they and they have to wait three months until they know for sure. Mm-hmm. So I was like, damn, she's fucked up. Yeah. Um, I fucking love this story. I liked I liked seeing just like how everything wrapped up together. Mori Gucci's that mm-hmm. bitch. I can't believe she fucking Jeez. did that shit. <laughs> oh my god. I think I would I think I would give this book a four point five out of five. Yes. And I'm only mm-hmm. saying that because considering my other five stars of the year, I don't want to put it in that same pedestal. Like it's not mm-hmm. up up there. But it was a really good read. And I would also continue to read books from this author. Yeah, I feel like this is definitely a story that's going to stay with me. You know what I mean? Like, this is something that I would tell other people about. Like, oh, my God. So here's the tea. Here's what happened. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Just go through all of the chapters with them. And honestly, I think both of us kind of did the book justice. We kind of like covered up. It covered everything. Um, But I do recommend go read it because just like the writing style, I really, really liked it. Mm -hmm. It was very easy to read. And I just, it was so good. It was so good. It hooks you. 
It hooks you from the start. I know. Oh my god. But thank you for choosing this one. This one was so fun to talk about. Okay, my next choice is another Alexander Bracken one. Are you ready? Oh my god. You know what? Suddenly, <laughs> podcast canceled. <laughs> thank you everyone who is listening to us in podcast form whether that be spotify apple podcast amazon music or anywhere you get your podcasts on thank you so much if you can leave a review and also a rating of five stars because we're doing great we're killing it um that would be great if you want to also tell your friends family loved ones anyone about us um that also helps a lot the best type of exposure is through word of mouth um, if you have extra money, just like $5 in your pocket, what's something that they could you do, Yahira? So we did make a Patreon, and right now it really just serves as a way for our listeners to really let us know that they love what we do. So you can find us on patreon.com slash book fix. And if you want to support us on YouTube as well, although we don't have it as updated as we would want, um, we will update and uh, we post every Tuesday and Thursday. So if you want to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, just so you know when we post on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thank you. But thank, thank you. you, everyone, for watching our episode. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, dude, I'm scared. <laughs> well, we're no, here fucking hearing off. noises. Stop. Don't say that. Is your sister there? <laughs> I'm gonna conquer. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna conquer my fear and drink some leche. Oh my drink some milk. <gasps> You're gonna drink milk at a time like this? You know it's always milk time. I'm I am Mr. Werther in all forms except physical. I am Mr. Werther. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, you know what? I see the resemblance. <laughs>